Hey guys, today we want to talk to you a little bit about productivity. You know, this is something that I love. This is something that I'm all about. This is something that I feel like it is ingrained in me. I love finding ways to be more productive, how to save more time in everything I do. But I have to say, when it comes to being productive, we absolutely need a balance to it. Sometimes we can take it from one extreme to the next, and that is the reason why we want to talk to you about that today. But before we get started, if this is your first time coming to this channel, I just want to welcome you. My name is Crystal, this is my husband Ronaldo, and we just want to say hello. This is a channel where we're talking about getting real with life's topics and finding ways that we can be healthy and productive to live out this thing called life. So if you have not yet subscribed, make sure that you do that right now so that you are alerted every single time a new video is released. So I have to say, you know, in Ephesians 5 verses 16 through 17, it says that making the best use of time because the days are evil, therefore do not be foolish, be under, but understand what the will of the Lord is. You know, it is so it is so important for us to be wise with what we do with our time. And we need to make sure that we're living life productive so that we're not wasting time and we're not falling prey to the things of the devil, the, to the things of the world and, and what the world is trying to, to, to derail us and distract us with. But when it comes to being productive, we need to also make sure that we are living stress-free. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to live stress-free, but we do need to make a plan while giving grace for change. And so I really want to just touch a little bit about being stressful when it comes to being productive. Because I'll tell you right now, sometimes people have this way about them where they feel like everything has to be just so. Yeah, because you know what? Because the reason why they feel that way, because they're, they're stressed about wasting time. Because yeah. some people, mm -hmm. you know, every minute, every second, every hour, it, it's about I got to have something to do. Yep. And the reason why I can speak to that, because I am one of those people that do things like that, you know, because I have to make sure I maximize my time. I don't want to waste time. And, you know, think about it. That is very stressful. It is. It is stressful. And a lot of times, too, people stress about losing money. Mm. And so when it comes to being productive, sometimes we go over the top in, pro in being productive to the point where we're stressing so much about wasting money. And, and to the point where, you know, that saying goes, is don't cry over spilled milk. <laughs> and people are like, I just bought that gallon of milk. Well, don't stress about it. But too often people are stressing about losing money. Yeah, and, and, and that adds to some other things, too, because we, it causes stress because we can't figure out how to relax. We, can we figure that out that we're, we're stressing because we can't figure out how to relax? And, and that's really one of those things that, you know, being productive, that's one of the things in areas that it really stresses out because I can't figure out how to relax because yeah. I always got to have something to do. Yeah. Yeah. I got to have something to do every minute, every time, every second. So yeah. I can't, I don't, I got to figure that out. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is this, is that there's, there's different people in the world. Some are overly productive mm -hmm. and some people are, I don't know if you want to put it as underly productive, <laughs> but they're not productive at all. <laughs> And sometimes it can cause somebody stress mm -hmm. on just the fact of having to make a plan. Mm -hmm. Sometimes being productive causes somebody to be stressed mm -hmm. out. And that's the reason why I really want to touch on the two different extremes of being productive, the two different personality types of being productive. Yeah, because I can relate to some of these things that I'm about to talk to you because there, there are some people that are just too rigid. You know, <laughs> and you know, and, and I, I'm actually speaking to myself right now. I might be speaking to you, but I'm also speaking to myself because sometimes we have people that are too structured. You know, there's people that have in their day, they're so structured that they cannot think about anything else but what they have put on their time, their plate, their schedule, you know, yeah. Yeah, because that what that does is that makes them too inflexible. They're not flexible with their time because why? I am so structured. I have to do this at this minute, this at this time. So anything that comes in, I cannot be flexible. The other thing is I'm very meticulous. Because you got to be meticulous because people are meticulous about their time. They're meticulous about what they're doing. And so being very meticulous about all that is because I'm being very structured. I'm, being, I'm not being very flexible. And I'm meticulous about it. And because in turn, what that does is it makes you out to be a perfectionist. Yep. You know that? Yep. It makes you yep. come out to be that person that is a perfectionist because why? I have to perfect my craft. I have to perfect what I do. But what it does is, you know what? It's causing these different stresses in your life. And you're talking about a person that is very extreme because mm -hmm. at times I can be that extreme person. I'm guilty of it too. Like I know that I, I get that way as well in certain areas of my life. Mm -hmm. And it is something so important that we have to learn how to work on it. Right. Uh, but again, you know, there are some people that are so overly productive huh? and there's some people that are not productive at all. Being productive makes them feel stressed out. And so this is the one other reason why, you know, the other extreme 
is somebody that just doesn't even know where to begin. Mm -hmm. Is that person that gets stressed out thinking that they have to live through some type of structured life because oftentimes they're very free spirited. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a free soul. You know, they're kind of like living casually. But sometimes there are negative effects to somebody that does not live productive because they're wasting time. They're going through their life and they're not necessarily maybe necessarily kind of like the scripture says it's like we need to make sure that we are making the best use of our time so those are the two extremes somebody can be absolutely very rigid and somebody can be nothing at all all right so as we're talking about productivity i want to mention a little bit about my background and what i used to do in my career and you know a lot of my um areas of expertise was really more about structuring my my workload structuring systems structuring structuring processes to the point where we can be more productive and i am a very analytical person and i what i always do is i'm always looking for things to be more efficient and more effective in what i'm doing and that is something like i said is so ingrained into me it's something that i kind of like i looked at it like i wanted to be this efficiency expert because i love going into people's people's situations, people's areas, and seeing how can I look at that thing and analyze it to where I can make it more efficient. I love looking at situations to see how can I make it better, how can I make it faster, how can I make it more productive. And so to go along with that, there are actually two mindsets that we each go by. And when it comes to being productive, if you are a very productive person, and even just if you're not a very productive productive person, but if you're productive at all, there are typically two mindsets that you go by. And it's either, you know, we either think in a way that one, we are, we are efficient and effective in what we do. Or the second one is, is that we are, we're kind of more mindful of this, this production line mindset. Yeah, because when you talk about being efficient and effective, you know, think about how I can best utilize my because mm -hmm. some people are, when you go through this and understanding what between the efficient and being effective is, how to best utilize your time because there are good and there are bad uh, habits about it, you know, yeah. because on the good side, you know, you can think about all the time that you're saving. You know, because you're yeah. being very productive in what you're doing, all the timing that you, you're, you're saving throughout the whatever process that you may be going through, either it can be home, even be a work environment, you know, you're thinking about all the, all the time that you're actually saving. So that's a good thing, you know, yeah. but the bad thing about it is the impatient part of it. You know, because we're being very impatient about the, the how effective I already am because is it you gotta have the second guess that is it really gonna work? Yeah. Because you start yeah. second guessing everything and then you and then and then it turns out to be you get very impatient because you want things now, you wanna make sure it's working now, and so because you're doing those types of things, you know, you're not really being as effective as you should be, and you're probably not being as efficient because why? You're so concerned about those those patterns, you know so concerned about what you're gonna do next. But mm -hmm. you also have to understand that there have to be balance in all of this you know yeah. because there is good and there's bad things in there but you got to have a balance in there because you have to be aware of the situation you have to be aware of when you're trying to be efficient and being affected at what you're doing at the same time you know there has to be a balance in all that you know you just can't go all out on it you have to plan out your time through the whole process to make sure you get the desired results that you're looking for because sometimes we will go through these things and then we can figure out you know what we don't waste so much time doing something what yeah. you thought we was actually being effective yeah but then also too there's the other side of that you know that you're thinking you're spending too much time but actually you actually being effective you know because i remember there was a story and um and going through some with the seminaries because there was a story that one of my professors told me that one of the uh one of his one of his mentors would pray three and four hours out of his day now, I don't know about you. I can think about praying three or four hours of my day because before my day gets started, you know, I'm losing time. But he said that because his mentor prayed three and four hours, but he prayed about his day. He prayed about what he was doing. His day was really effective. Now, I don't know too many people can do that, but this particular a mentor of his was able to do that, but his time was actually saved, was more productive because why? He went before God and God helped him lead him through his, through his day to help them be more productive. Yeah, I mean, another side of it, too, is another mindset is the production line. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the one where it's almost kind of like people have this mindset like they think in assembly line way. Oh, yeah. You know, they mm -hmm. think about how fast can I get to the next task. You mm -hmm. know somebody on assembly line and you've got a lot of people and I'll do a task, a task, task, task. Next move, next move. And people have this mindset of an assembly line and they're just so quick to move to the next thing. Now, at the same time, there are good and bad traits when it comes to that because, you know, you're getting for things done. You're getting a lot of things done, and that's a good thing. You know, you're being productive in that, and that's a good thing. 
But oftentimes, those type of people who have this assembly mind mindset, they're, they, they're, they're not embracing the little moments of life uh, that, and they're just passing them by. Yeah. They're literally just trying to check off the box, task done, and yet all this stuff that's going around, around them where you want to enjoy life, you want to enjoy the people that are with you, you want to enjoy those little moments, and oftentimes they pass right by you because you're thinking like an assembly line mindset. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is something where we, ha we have to have balance with it. Yeah. We need to be mindful of the good things, but and, and embrace and do the good things, but at the same time be mindful of those unhealthy things that come with that type of mindset. And so what I want you to do is to think about the healthy side of things, but I also want to make sure that you're still recognizing what is unhealthy. And so a couple of videos back, a couple of months back, we talked about the Enneagram. And when it comes to the Enneagram, it has multiple personality traits that are in there. And if you take that test, I will assure you that you will be astounded by how accurate they are with who you are. But one of the things on the Enneagram is that it is talking about your healthy side of your personality and the unhealthy side of your personality. And when we read those things, we look at the healthy side and we think, oh, yep, that's about, that's me, that's to a T. And we read the unhealthy side and somehow we are kind of like, we think in a way like, hmm, maybe, maybe not, you know, like we don't want to, we don't want to adopt those unhealthy sides. But when it comes to our personality, we have to embrace the healthy side, make sure that we're doing the best that we can and live out life with what trait, what personality God put in you. But we also need to make sure that we're working on those unhealthy sides. So that way we can correct it and live our best life. So I want to share a little bit with you about, and it's, it's in Proverbs uh, 6 verses 9 through 11. And this is a scripture that's really talking about, it says in there that it's, it's a warning against folly, which is really means warning against foolishness. Mm -hmm. And in Proverbs 6, 9 through 11, it says, How long will you lie there, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of your hands, of the, of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armor man. And this is why we have to be mindful of what we're doing with our time. We have to make sure that we're utilizing our time and we're living our life in the best way possible. And in order to do that, it means that you're not wasting time. Yeah, because again, you're talking about the health of side, because there's some, there's some things that isn't important to do. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some things that what we need to understand for the healthier side, what we should be able to do. It's one, we need to make a plan. Yeah. You know, yeah. make a plan, you know, have a schedule. You know, there's nothing wrong with uh, actually setting out some time to actually make a plan for your day or what you're planning on doing because you can uh, because the second piece of that is to have a schedule okay because making a plan and you also have a schedule you know have a schedule so you can help you maximize your day to be more productive throughout your day you know because what it will do is with the making a plan and having a schedule it will develop you to have an actual routine because yeah. some of us do new routines in our life because some of us do not work very well mm -hmm. by trying to create things on our own so by you making a plan it will help you structure your day by having a schedule by doing certain things at a certain time it will help you make a, a routine and another piece about that is throughout your day is make a list because you know, if if, I, if you go in my office, I have little uh, little posty notes because I make lists. So when I'm on calls and make people say certain things to me, I make a list of certain things that I need to get done. Because why? Making a list helps me stay organized and helps me stay productive. It also will try to help for you as well too. And for those that you know, talking about finance, because we talked about finances before, you know, in our last video, you know. If you're making a plan, you got a schedule, it helps you develop a routine, you're also making a list, you also, for your finances, to make a budget. What that does is it also helps you to actually be more productive because you don't have That's to worry true. about, yeah, because yeah. you don't have to worry about what's coming yeah. in, what's going on, what's, what I got to pay, pay exactly. next, when I have to pay it, because if you've already done these steps, you already made a plan, you got a schedule, you're developing these routines and you got a list, your budget is already in place. All you have to do is just follow along and now you're maximizing your time, yes. but also, yes. As you're doing through all of this, you have to give yourself grace. Okay? Just don't be so rigid about, oh, yeah. I missed my time. Yeah. It's okay. You beat yourself up. Absolutely. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's okay. If you made a plan and you kind of messed up on your schedule a little bit, it's okay. Because why? You need to give your room for change. Because you know what? The schedule that you made to come up with, it might not be the best one. Because sometimes what I call in my barber do a check and adjust. You know, you have to check it. Is it working? If not, you adjust it. So that's what we have to do in our life. We gotta do some time, we gotta do some type of checking and adjusting. Because why? You're gonna have to adjust some things in your life. You know, because there's a scripture, 
Proverbs 12, 11, and it says, Whoever works this land will have plenty of bread, but he who follows worthless pursuits lacks sense. Wow. Now, that's a very yeah. powerful scripture because you know why? Because if you, do the, if you don't do these things what we, we're talking about here, that you will follow worthless pursuit. You're going to be pursuing some yeah. things that just don't make sense. You're yeah. going to be chasing something that you should not be chasing. You're going to be chasing something that God told you not to go after. Other, and, and in that pursuit that you're doing, it lacks less sense of what you're doing at all. Yeah, and it kind of made me think about, you know, as you're talking about a plan, mm -hmm. you know, I think about our vacations <laughs> and what we do. And I have to tell you, <laughs> we go on a vacation every Ooh. year. COVID kind of messed that up this year, yes, but, you know, we're moving on. But every year we go on a vacation. We take the kids somewhere. We usually try to take them to a new state every year. So that way they can kind of grow up and say they've traveled the world. Mm -hmm. But when we go on a vacation, I have a habit. I'm very structured. I have a list list for our packing because I have to think it out. Are we swimming? Are, is it winter? Like it's never winter, but, <laughs> but do we need our swimsuits? Do we need to bring towels? Like what do we need to bring? And I make a list just for packing. Then I'll go into the time that we're going to be away and I will make a plan for every day of our vacation. It will include the cost of what we're going to spend, whether or not we're going to eat, do we need to eat out for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, um, what activity are we going to do, and how much time do we have, and do I need to call and make reservations, and, and plan ahead, do I need to book it in advance, like I make a whole plan, and he jokes about it every time, <laughs> but it is something that I love to do, I enjoy it, it it's kind of like that, that child that's like getting ready for Christmas, and they're doing things just to prepare them, because the excitement is so much in them, that they just feel like, if I just do this and get prepared ahead of time, it's almost kind of feel like you've got pre-vacation on the mind, like you're doing something in advance before you actually leave. And I make a plan. But at the same time, I don't live and die by that plan. You know, when it comes to having a plan, I know we went to, last year we went to Hawaii, and we had so much on the plan. Yes, we did. <laughs> we, did so we did snorkeling with turtles. We did, we went to the Polynesian Culture Center. We went and went on different tours. Like, we went to the Dole Plantation. We had some days where we planned to go to the beach and just relax, but we didn't necessarily stick straight to that plan because one of the things is, is we have to give room for change and I know I struggled with that when it came to like my career and again as always like there are certain moments in my life certain common statements that people make that they stick with me and I was told that change is good crystal and I learned that and that was something I really embraced and it sticks with me to this day with everything in my life change is good so when we're talking about moving to a different state <laughs> It was hard this time because this was my first year moving out of state, but then after a while, it was like, wow, this is easy. <laughs> Where else do you want to go? Where's the next? Where's next? And the other thing is it's changing careers. It's changing just if something's not working in your environment, change your environment. Change, change your surroundings. Change the people you're hanging out with. Maybe you need a new set of friends. You know, we've learned a lot of things in our times in the last few years about change, and it really just helped me to embrace that change as necessary. Yeah, yeah, you know, because as we continue to talk about this, you know, you talk about what we do in the natural too, but let's talk about what we do in, in the biblical way. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about with God, mm -hmm. all right, because, you know, those who go to church and those who read the Word of God, we serve a strategic God. Oh, yes, we do. We yep. serve a very strategic yep. God. He does things for a reason on purpose, and he has yep. been very productive of what he does. And he's very effective, and he's very efficient of what he does. So you just go back to, let's just take one story out of the Bible, because there are many things that God has done. But let's take Noah. And God was very specific in everything that he told Noah what to do and when to do it. It was to the point he told him what type of timber to use. He told him what the length of the timber to use. Yeah. He told him when to actually build the ark. He told him what animals to do. I mean, God was very strategic in what he was doing. Because basically what God, he was very particular. Yeah. And sometimes we have to be particular in what we do because yeah. we serve a God who's strategic and he was very particular in what he did. He, he was particular on every instruction that he gave Noah because there was a certain goal that God had in mind to get. He had a goal that he wanted to get to, but he had to be very particular in that because he was very particular in that. God was very productive in that as well, too, because he was productive because what? It was a certain time that he wanted everything to get done. There was a certain place that he needed to get, so yeah. he had to be productive in there because he knew when this was going to happen. Yeah. But so for Noah to get there, he had to be very specific with him. He had to be very particular with him, and God was very productive in that. 
and what he told Noah. And Noah was very productive of what he did to actually build the ark. And so that's something that's true for all of us, that we serve a very strategic God. So that means that we should be strategic as well, too. We need to be very particular of what we do so that we are very productive. Because all you had to do, God had a plan. And, you know, because God has a plan, we should have a plan. And, and as we are working through our plans, you know, that we have to be particular so we are very productive in what we are doing. Yeah, and it just makes me think about our lives and the things that we have faced. Mm -hmm. And I really, like, it's such a testament that God absolutely has his hand on your life, and he is very productive with it. Uh, yes, he is. God knows that he knows what you can handle and when you can handle it, uh -huh. and he knows when you can't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I believe that he is very specific, and he does not allow you to waste your time. Right. Um, again, you could go against whatever he's telling you, and then you will waste your time. <laughs> but yep. if you're obedient to what he's calling you to do, Listen to man no more and follow God. Amen. Man will tell you and they will lead you down a path to stay where you are, do what they want you to do, and it's all for their personal gain. Mm -hmm. But sometimes God is calling you to do a new thing. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to direct you down the path that he's been trying to get you to go. And today is the day. Mm -hmm. You've got to be ready to be obedient and listen to God. I just want to encourage you that if whether or not you are that person, maybe you are that person that is so productive. You are so rigid in, your, in being productive with your life that maybe you are losing sight of embracing the little moments. Maybe you are so inflexible. Maybe you are this perfectionist of life. Let me just tell you, perfection does not exist. And we need to be able to embrace the little moments. So if you are that type of, of productive person that is so rigid, take a step back. Take a deep breath and learn how to make room for change. But if you are also that type of person who maybe you're scared of being productive, you're scared of the thought of having to live life with a routine, with a structure, because you, are, you live with such a free soul, you will end up wasting time if you do not form some type of productive lifestyle. Let God use your life in the way that he sees fit, but make sure that you're doing it in order. Do it orderly because you don't want to go 10 years down the road and see all the time that has been wasted of things that you could be doing with your life because you were just too scared to make a move. So I just want to encourage you, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, make sure that you're doing that right now and hit the bell so you're alerted for every new release. We do this Let's Get Real episode every single Wednesday, and we're talking about a new topic every single week to attack this thing we call life in a healthy and productive way. Give this video a good thumbs up and give us a like on the, on the video, but also comment as well. What is your lifestyle? Are you productive? Do you struggle with productivity? If you are productive, what do you do in your day? Help the rest of the community with your tips as well. And I just want to encourage you, as always, live healthy, live productive, and live with a fresh, renewed perspective. We love you guys. Talk to you next week. Bye-bye. I've never seen her lay down underneath that before. Lay down. Lay down. <laughs>